Oh, I didn't even check where my camera is. I guess I'll have to do that when I put it on my camera. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello and happy Thursday. We are so glad you're here. It is, oh. Oh. <laughs> it is Thursday and we are excited for a Thursday afternoon laugh and craft. Um, let's see who's here. Margie was the first one in. Hello, hello, Margie. Candy's with me here, just if you couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm getting things adjusted there. And let's see. Yeah. Most playing cards are ATC size. That is true. So if you don't have a playing card handy, what we're doing today, you could do on an ATC. That is for sure. Hello, Dawn. Happy to see you as well. Hello, Glynis. Happy to see you. Hey, Laura. Jello, jello. Swamped at work, so mostly lurking. That's okay. We're just happy to have you here in any form that we can get you. Thumbs up, please, and thank you. Thanks, Margie, for always remembering that. Really do appreciate it. Isn't she the best admin ever? Yes. I don't think about it, and she always remembers, and I so appreciate it. Cannot tell you how much. Hi, Kathy. Good to see you. So, so, so. Today, we are really excited because, oh, hey, would you shoot a private message to Christy Meter? I meant to do that right before we started. And just tell her, Marianne asked me to message you and see if you were going to be at today's live. Because <laughs> I think she will want to be here um, in response to a question that she asked me. So let's see. Who's going who's gonna to work along with us today? with either an ATC or a playing card, um, you know, a piece of cardstock or chipboard that's two and a half or two and a quarter by three and a half, that works. What we're going to do today, I get a lot of requests for tutorials on. <laughs> Thank you. I get a lot of requests for tutorials on how to make tags, how to decorate tags, how to decorate cards, how to decorate playing cards. And when I question, you know, exactly, because that's pretty broad. When I question what it comes down to, I'm seeing is that a lot of people would like to have kind of a formula. And there's a lot of different formulas. And we may put together a program here where we're going to give you a bunch of them. But um, a formula, if you have a formula that you could grab a playing card or an ATC card or a tag, something like that, and say, okay, I'm going to use this formula to decorate it. Because somebody says, just decorate it, just embellish it. You know, until you've done it a bunch and you feel really comfortable, I know what I'm hearing from a lot of people is that I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. You know, I, I don't, it just doesn't. I, what I see, I really love it, but I don't know how to get that look. So we're going to give you a formula today to get a certain look on um, a playing card, which you could also do on an ATC, which you could also do on a tag or a journal card, even a greeting card. If you are a card maker, um, you could do this, use this formula on any of those. And like I said, there's lots of formulas. So this is just one. But before we get started, Candy, can you throw the website up on the screen? Before we get started, I just want to take a quick minute to mention that the cart for the subscription box is open. It is open to the public. <clears throat> so uh, I think most of you already got in with your private code and got in on the subscription box, but it is open to the public now. So anybody can go to hppcreate.com. Hey, Stacy, happy to see you. Here's my friend Stacy from Phoenix. So hppcreate.com and the card is open. So you can uh, take a look, read about it and see if you want to subscribe to our subscription box. It will be come out monthly. And remember the awesome little HPP journal that is going to be in the first box. Somebody asked me if you could buy this uh, elsewhere. You know what? I'm pretty sure you can. I'm pretty sure you could probably find it on Amazon for $29.99 um, and uh, maybe even elsewhere because it, it, it wasn't designed for HPP, but they were handmade um, at my request for HPP with the hand cut leather. 
And But what you can't find anywhere else, what you can't buy anywhere else, is happy paper people on the back of your journal. So you might be able to find the book somewhere, but you won't find that, that uh, emboss on the back. I love the binding of the spine. And remember that when you open it, the inside is five signatures of handmade recycled cotton paper. I love this paper. I've been writing on it for a few months and I absolutely love this paper. It's great to write on, whether pencil or pen. It writes really, really well. So, hi, Joni. Good to see you. So, don't uh, forget this um, journal. A couple of people have asked me about it just to make sure we're really clear. This journal that uh, was embossed for Happy Paper People will be in the first subscription box. And that's the only thing I'm telling you that's in the box. Everything else is going to be a surprise. So this will be in the first subscription box only. That is the only box it will be in. So the card is open now. It will close on Monday, Halloween. It'll close Monday night at uh, midnight. Sorry, got a hair attached yet in my mouth. So <laughs> it'll close Monday at midnight and then the cart will be closed. And if anybody comes in after that, they will then have to get on the VIP wait list when we have more spots open, the VIP wait list will again get first option. They'll have the first option to uh, go in and take up whatever spots are available. I'm trying to get that glare of the light out of there, but um, they'll have, yeah, they'll get that first option to go in and take up those spots before it is open to the public. If they take up all the spots and there are none available, then it would never be open to the public. So, uh, but you have until Monday. If you know somebody who is crafty or who loves to journal or who likes some of the vintage type stuff that we use, the theme of the first box is vintage, just straight vintage. So it's, a, it's an awesome box of vintage. And um, just uh, send the, the link to hppcreate.com to anyone you know that you think might be interested so they at least have the option to check it out um, before Monday. It is football season. And we have to support the Utah State Aggies. So, <laughs> just have to give a little shout out to the Utah State Aggies. So. <laughs> All right. So let me switch cameras here. Uh, I forgot to check my camera set up. So let's. We got a big old glare and that's okay. As soon as we start working, um, that'll be gone there. All right. So. What we're going to do today is alter a playing card. And I suspect we'll have time for more than one. And we're going to give you a formula that you can use to decorate, to alter this playing card that you could use over and over again to alter anything you want. So it's uh, super easy, and but turns out looking super amazing. So I put the supplies in the description box if you had a chance to look at that. If you didn't, what you'll need is a playing card, um, a little bit of tissue paper, not big enough for the playing card, um, a tiny bit of uh, dress pattern, not even this much, you know, probably that much. That's all we'll need. Um, some color. I'm going to use some Distress Oxide sprays. You could use, if you don't have the sprays, you could use Distress Oxide um, ink pad because you can put it down on acrylic or glass and just add some water to it and it'll work just fine. Uh, let's see, what else do we have around here? Uh, I brought several things because you could choose any of these. You won't need all of them, but you might have some little pieces of uh, cheesecloth or linen or cotton or something thin there, little pieces of uh, a piece of lace. Again, you're not going to need all these, but if you have any one of these, it'll work. You'll just need a couple things. Oh, I didn't grab a piece of vellum. Hmm, maybe I'll use something else instead of vellum. See, it's not it's not something that cannot be changed, and that's why it's a good formula. Because if you have this and you don't have that, you can always substitute. Um, we'll we'll do some splatters, and I'm going to use black acrylic paint that's just really watered down for splatters here. Uh, glue. This is uh, just a PVA glue. It's actually from my big jug of uh, tacky glue and I just add water to it. 
so that it is real thinned out to use. Great for this kind of stuff. I don't like to waste, waste, use up my good glue, really expensive good glue for things like this. Um, what else might we need? Um, oh, a little bit of black thread, which I forgot to grab. So either I'll go over and get some or I'll pull some off of a piece of fabric. <laughs> That'll work. Pull some black thread off of something because we just need a little bit. Let's see here. There we go. If I don't lose that before we get started. Okay. And a butterfly. A butterfly and I have an orange butterfly because the prompts to make this if you like to make things by prompts and you want to do your own thing the prompts are orange vintage script and splatter so for script I'll just use a, a little script stamp so if you're quick grabbing some things so you can work along with us those are the things that we'll use and you can do your own thing if you want to totally or if you want to follow along and see what Candy and I are going to do with those prompts as a formula, then you certainly may. Because it's not the prompts that give us the formula. It's the formula that we're going to use with the prompts. So for orange, I'm going to use an orange uh, butterfly. For vintage, I'm going to use the oxides. For script, the stamp. And for splatter, the black acrylic paint. Okay, so let's see who else has come in. Great, Dawn. I will check it. Awesome. Um, let's see. Yeah, Laura, you don't think Margie needs you for snark? <laughs> Dress that queen up in style. Um, and I thought I would do something with a pretty background because I'm only going to alter this side. Then she'll look nice. Hi, Toby. Good afternoon. Um, you could go ahead and take that HPP Creative off if you want. Or if it's not irritating, let's just leave it on so anybody else coming in can see it. And that'll remind me at the end to remind all the people who just came in. Hey, Gigi, hope you're feeling somewhat better today. Hope each day is a little bit better than the day before. Okay, so here is how we're going to start. Let me make sure I've got this up on the TV. Oh, somebody just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Charlie. <laughs> uh, we need to get a little tiny play table that we can put in your craft room with something that is not going to destroy anything when he oh, makes a mess, but that he thinks is way cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he was trying to, I was mixing paint yesterday. He was ah, like, there you he go. Wanted help. He wanted to help. That he, that's something that he only gets to play with when he's in your craft room. So that makes it extra special. And so he sits down oh, and he's like getting markers out of here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that's scary. The markers everywhere. Less yeah, than water-based, of course. But blue. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is put some glue. Oh, this apparently was spicy pasta sauce at one time. That lid. All right, we're going to put some glue on. I'm going to grab a piece of paper just to put underneath it, just so I don't have to keep cleaning up the desk. All right, so going to just cover it with glue, any old glue, nothing, you know, just something that'll hold the tissue paper. I'm going to put the tissue paper on it. Now, the main purpose for the tissue paper is. Not, it not only does it give it texture, but it gives it a coating so that other things will stick to it. Because as you know, most um, playing cards are glossy. And when they're glossy, stuff doesn't like to stick. So if we put, uh, you could do a layer of gesso if you'd prefer, uh, but the tissue paper does add a nice texture to it. And I also have on hand, I'll, uh, I don't know if we'll need that again. I'm going to put the lid on just so I don't, you know, do what I do best <laughs> and spill it everywhere. I have on hand a dryer um, because we probably want to dry it between steps so we don't have to wait for it to dry. This is something that you could very easily do as a mass make and have an assembly line. Let's see, hopefully that'll knock out the dryer sound in a minute. Yep. 
yeah, you can easily do this mass make um, assembly line style and line some of these up and do them. And then the first ones will be drying as you're going down the row, drying the others or doing the others, gluing the others on. Margie thinks that markers and paint would be for Charlie would be extremely entertaining. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm missing a light somewhere because I got a big old glare and not, not enough light. I don't like the glare that that gives us right here, but maybe we can drown it out. There we go. It gives us a shadow, but, but Hey, there we, it would just cover the glare with something. Okay. All right. So we put some, we probably glued it. I probably glued it right to the paper. That was good. Put the glue on, put the tissue paper on, should have lifted it up. The only purpose in lifting it up is to tear the tissue paper around it. So if it's stuck to the paper, no big deal. Just tear the tissue paper around it. You could cut the tissue paper around it if you want it nice and neat. Um, for me, it would depend on what, how I'm going to alter the card, what um, type of techniques I'm going to use. Hi, Tabitha. Uh, because sometimes having the extra uh, sticking off the edge adds some really cool little texture. Other times I might want it nice and neat up against the edge. So that is totally up to you. All right, so I am going to need just a little bit of glue, a couple spots on the edge that I can see. Didn't get enough glue on him. Let's see here, I'm trying to dry this uh with all the water out of this brush before i go put glue i don't want it that watered down the the, the pit. glue is already watered down where was it there was a corner it didn't have any at all right there oh man <laughs> margie says that um paint and markers with yeah. uh for Charlie would be very entertaining. <laughs> yeah, it is. He comes out with blue stuff on his arms all the time. He's <laughs> my you know, I've laid down where he can get it, you know. Yeah, it'd be entertaining for some, somebody. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not you. <laughs> uh, funny. Okay. All right, so... We can just leave this on there. It doesn't even matter. All right. So our next step after the tissue paper is to add the vintage color. And I pulled out um, vintage photo, um, walnut stain. And I was going to use brush corduroy, but I saw this hickory smoke and I haven't used this one ever. So I thought maybe I would try that one. So let me give him a quick shake. Yeah, do what she says, not what she does. <laughs> I have to show you how, how not to do it. <laughs> uh, no, normally I would just do it on my glass mat and then it wouldn't stick. So no big deal. I just don't want to have to keep cleaning it over and over in between every step. So not if I put that piece of paper down. Yeah, okay. I tried, I tried that. I don't like doing that. I'd rather just wipe it. <laughs> I should have just put down a silicone mat. I'm not like I don't have four of them. Okay, well, look at that funky. <laughs> wow. I've seen one that was quite that disturbed, but all right. That dry. Was... Mine's not dry. <laughs> uh, go ahead. I just dried mine with the blow dryer. Okay. So I'm going to take some vintage photo and I'm going to put it down here. And I'm going to take some walnut stain. That one's funky too. Are they all that way? <laughs> Some know. walnut stain. I don't remember seeing that before. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. God, I remembered it being more straight with just a little curve on the end. 
All right, and a little bit of hickory smoke. That's just a little kind of gray. And if I don't like that, I'll just add more vintage photo or walnut stain. I don't think I got enough vintage photo. Okay, so I've got those, and now I'm going to spritz them with a little bit of water and let them run around through the wrinkles and cracks of the tissue paper. Yes, you can lightly sand the paper. Margie is right. Lightly sand the paper to rough it up. You could put gesso on it. You could put a layer of, of paint on it. Um, and th yeah, that's why I said there's two reasons that I like using tissue and that one is to add the, the texture of the, I like all the wrinkles in the texture that you end up with behind your thing. So whatever you end up doing. All right. Um, let's see, is that the walnut stain? I like that. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, she did it. Yeah, already. <laughs> already. Already she did it. <laughs> Oop, there it is. Oop, there it is. <laughs> now, you know why I have two walnut stains? I must have known I was going to spill one. Good grief. Good grief, Charlie Brown. That's why I have these towels. These towels are amazing. I just let them get full of color. And when they're so dirty, then I just um, throw them in the laundry. I'm not going to mop it all up. I'm going to see if I can maybe mop a little bit of it up with the card. Get all over my stamp. Move that. Let me move that cute little book out of the way. Yeah, this is where Margie says, do as she says, not as she does. <laughs> See, you look at me and you go, yeah, if she can do it, I can do it. Certainly, you know. <laughs> if that lady can make something like that, I can too. <laughs> That's why I'm here. To show you guys how amazing you are and you don't even know it. Okay, I'm loving that rusty color that's coming out right there. And I think that's the walnut stain. So I'm mopping some of this up. I don't want to waste it. I should grab a couple of ATCs and, and just uh, try to mop up the rest. Or I think that towel is going to need to go oh, on. The... No, I did it. Did you? Did you? <laughs> did you seriously? No. We want to see. Oh, not as bad, but okay. <laughs> Thanks for making card. me feel better. <laughs> oh, you spilled it right on the card. Thanks for making me feel better, Candy. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did that on purpose. I know. <laughs> I know you did. You're just good that way. See what a good friend she is. Oh, wow. <laughs> Margie crafts like me. If it's not a mess, it's like a good burger. If it's not a mess, it's not worth putting in your face. <laughs> Oh, I got to get it off of my, um, my ink pad here though. So it won't go inside and mix with the, oh boy, what a mess. Easy to clean up off the glass, but it's all the other stuff that it touched. And now my hands. <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah. I just don't want it mixing with the, um, black archival. So let me clean off the edge of this <laughs> while Candy cleans up her mat. That's funny. Um, could just grab a piece of paper and soak it up with a piece of paper. That'd be a good start. A good start of something. I'll just put that down. Let it soak. Yeah, that'll be a good start of something. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> it always makes me laugh. It's like you think kids are a mess. <laughs> no, I think I'm more messy than Charlie. And then you get around us. <laughs> uh, all right. I think I have enough ink on it now after that. So I'm going to go ahead and screw the tops back on these. <laughs> Candy, don't follow the mistakes. Laura, they're not mistakes. <laughs> Uh, 
Laura spills sprays all the time. That's funny. <laughs> Margie, don't be sorry. It is funny. It is funny. It makes me laugh too. Yeah, you think kids are, are a mess and then you watch us. All right, let me dry this up real quick. <laughs> oh, man. I have to follow the mistakes. It's in my contract. <laughs> okay. So as it everybody always tells me, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents in crafting, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, unless it's not what you wanted. <laughs> but sometimes a mistake brings out something else cool. I don't think I intended to have that much ink on it but maybe that'll be cooler that way <laughs> maybe it'll just be better all right so let's see now <laughs> now i've lost my train of thought all right so we we dripped the color on it we sprayed some water we dried it now let's give it some black splatters no nope let's not let's give oh i'm getting all in a mess here let's give it some um some the stamp the script the script stamp next. And then we'll do black splatters. All right, where's my stamp? <laughs> my archival ink that is now probably uh, walnut, vintage walnut stain. Just wiping it off one more time. Because I keep seeing it ooze out from. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, and all you wonder why I don't craft along, <laughs> Margie says, she can't. Monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> A proper craft room is full of oops messes. Yes. Thank you, Joni. <laughs> it's part of the patina like coffee stains and pet hair. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good, Joni. That is so true. You know, yeah. Perfect is boring, right? I got a big uh, wet spot right there and I know if I stamp it I'll end up with ink all over my stamp so okay if you don't have any tissue paper there's a couple different things you can do. You can use um, the second layer of uh, napkins. This will work too. The other thing, if you uh, don't have any of that and you just want to use gesso, one of the things I love to do with gesso to get texture, put the gesso down and then put take the heat to it and leave the heat on it longer than you would. And it will bring up really nice bubbles out of the gesso. And though Margie's laughing so hard, she can't even type. <laughs> oh, if nothing else, we can entertain Margie. That might be about it. But, uh, but that makes my day if I can entertain Margie. Uh, yeah, so you can get bring up the bubbles with um, the gesso and heat to get some texture if you don't have um, or don't want to use tissue paper. That works too. All right, so now we're going to take this stamp. And I'm just going to get a little bit of script. Let's see. Where are we going to put it? Put it put it where we think it might be actually seen a little bit. Maybe up here. Yeah, there we go. And I'll put some down here. <sighs> oh, well, you know, laughing is good for you, right? <laughs> Joni, you needed to come here for your daily laugh. I might even get a little bit over here. Margie, it's nice to entertain you now and then because you're always entertaining us. <laughs> oh, well, well, at least we can laugh at it and not cry about it. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> okay, and now <laughs> let's venture into the black paint. I'm a little scared to venture into the black paint. <laughs> I know. Okay, so this is black acrylic paint. I just added a bunch of water to it. 
<laughs> Mine got really dark. <laughs> so, well, and I'm if you're smart white. like candy, then you put it into a baby food jar. And so it has a lid on it and you just shake it up instead of stirring it and spilling it. And then you can dip into it and uh, splatter it and then put the lid back on. So the thinner it is, the smaller uh, dots, splatters you're going to get. So keep that in mind when you're splattering, if you want big splatters or small splatters. Okay, I think that is sufficient and I'm gonna move that back over there with things on three sides of it. So hopefully it can't tip over. That's my goal there <laughs> is just to not tip over the black paint. And I think because I went a little dark on uh, the color, a little darker than I expected to, I think I'm gonna give it some gold splatters too. I think the gold splatters look really cool with the black and white even looks good with white. Gold and white. Yeah, <clears throat> I do have some white here. It's not watered down, but I do like I do like the old. It doesn't look like much when I first take it out, but when it dries, it actually dries gold. It's very deceiving. Try not to do it the same direction, so it's just not splattered in rows all going the same way. Doing a good job of hitting right next to it on the paper. Just want a little more on the card. On the card itself. There we go. That should work. How about right there? There we go. All right. Let's just put the lid on that one right now. Not even give it a chance. Yeah, I tried you. <laughs> <laughs> that one, when I spilled it, I, sp I had it tipped when I opened it. <laughs> it was cooler than I thought. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Yes, spilling is part of the formula. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that was in there somewhere. So if you're writing it down, then the, the formula is first, put something on the card that will hold other things. So that could be roughing it up with... with um, uh, sandpaper or putting some gesso down or putting some tissue paper down. There's three options, at least right there, or a napkin. That's four options. And those I like to keep just white so that we can choose what um, other colors we want. And the white is a good background. A little bit of heavy black right there. It's going to be covered up, so I'm not going to worry about that anymore. Okay, so that's the, the first layer there. If you're if you're writing down the formula, you need a little gold or something right in that corner. There we go. Okay, and then the second step would be to um, add some color to it. And you could do that with taking your oxide and putting it on to a surface and then taking a brush, add some water to it and bring that over and just brush it around. You could even do it with your fingers if you wanna get your fingers in it or uh, flicking some drops of sprays uh, or other liquid on it and then adding some, spritzing some water to get it to move around. And you don't have to completely saturate it um, as I have done, but I think it's gonna turn out anyway. In the end, I think it'll all turn out. Okay, and then, the reason for doing the things like the splatters and then the the black, uh, the black and the gold, you know, on top of color. Yeah, we already have color there, but the more little things you do like that adds layers, and those layers are what gives it dimension and interest. So then we did a little bit of stamping, just a little bit up here, a little bit down here, a little bit over here. I kind of did them in some of the light places so that it would kind of peek out as if it's coming from underneath that. All right, then I was just kind of giving that a minute to dry and it's not completely drying and I don't want to just spread that color. So I'm going to give them a quick dry here. Hi, Angie. Angie, how are you feeling? Ooh, she has something for you. Woohoo! Woo! A virus. 
Um, Angie, is it good or bad? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even have to have a cuppy cat to do it myself. <laughs> I totally understand, though, why cuppy is not allowed in there. All right. So then I didn't even bring any vellum over. So I'm going to let me see if I have some right here. I might have some right behind me because we're going to do some layers of some things that add interest. So the next step is to layer things. Um, let's see. Vellum, vellum. Pretty sure there was some right here. I know the head. I must have took it all out here. Here we go. All right. So this is plain vellum. The vellum could be uh, stamped. The vellum could have a design on it. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> We're going to take a little piece of vellum and we're going to tear it because you know how we like torn things. Mm, I don't know if that's long enough. I think I want it a little longer. So I'm going to start at this end. I'll do a smaller one. I've got um, playing cards in all different sizes from really large to small. So I can save a smaller piece and do something small with it later. Might be too long, but we'll see in a minute. If I have to shorten it up, I will. Um, so a piece of vellum on the bottom. And we might even choose to ink the edges just a bit. If one can find um, a blending tool that they just moved out of the way. And now, oh, here we go. I knew I just moved it out of the way. I give it just a little bit of, just a little bit of um, vintage color. Not a lot so that it literally looks like it's been sitting around like this and the edges have started to brown, not that it's been, had color added to it. Okay, so here's where we're going to layer the things that give it the interest, that give it the texture, that give it the depth and make um, your focal point, which is your butterfly, pop out. Okay, so we start with a piece of vellum and then we are going to add a little piece of pattern paper that we pulled off here. Okay, so all we need is just a little piece of pattern paper. I'm gonna scrunch it all up. We like the wrinkles. And then, <laughs> then try to open it again. <laughs> uh, the wrinkles give you some nice texture there. So we're gonna open that. Okay, that is feeling just a little bit long to me now. Was probably fine with the first one, but you know, got a whole piece of vellum. I can use them all for something. All right, so put that in there. And then we're going to put this little piece of tissue paper, which, which is a pattern paper right over the top. Feels just a tiny bit large. So I'm gonna go like that. That's gonna go right over the mic realign them when we get everything on here to decide what we want um you know what direction we want it to go we're not gluing it down yet right now we're just um looking at it to see what we want where so then we're going to take a little piece of either cheesecloth or maybe a little piece of sari silk or a piece of lace uh, a piece of muslin or cotton or something something that either can pull apart or fray a little bit to give you some stuff that sticks out a bit. It's always nice. So I was going to use that. Let's see which one pulls apart nicer. This sorry silk stuff pulls apart really nice too. It doesn't pull apart. Well, some of it does. Some of mine is so old it really does pull apart, but it usually will give a good, um, a good ragged edge. See how easy that tears apart. Okay. But I do, I want some more raggedy edges. So I'm just going to pull some more of that, get a hold of some more of those fibers. Here we go. Get hold some more fibers and pull them out. So it's just kind of raggedy there. Okay. So 
If you had a piece of cheesecloth handy, I'd probably put a piece of cheesecloth there. I'm going to use this piece of um, sari silk and put that right there. Might be just a tiny bit large. And so I'm going to tear just little bits off. Now it might be a kind of a tiny bit small. <laughs> but if I need to, I can put another piece beside it. Got all kinds of great little fibers here now that I've pulled off from it. Okay, and now the black thread. So we pulled some black thread off of that piece of fabric. Might not be enough. Let me see if I can. I don't have my black thread handy, so I'm just pulling some threads off of this scrap piece of fabric here, which gives me a nice jagged edge, a rough edge there to use for something, but also gives me the um, thread that I want. Okay. And I want that kind of all, not all together, just, I mean, not all perfect together. I want it kind of all wound in a circle, but wound here and there, everywhere, wherever. All right, so let's go back and do this, and then this, and then this. So three or four little layers of things gives you some nice um, texture, and it gives you some nice depth. We'll get that end in there, and then we put the butterfly on top of and get hold of the butterfly. We'll put the butterfly on top of that. Now I feel like this butterfly needs a little depth. It's got a little white around the edge. So I'm gonna actually use my black blending brush and just go around the edge to try to give it a little bit of a frame. I don't think the vintage photo would stand out enough because it's brown and this is orange. So hoping that that black, there's not much on this blending brush but maybe there's just enough to give it just a little bit of frame, which gives it a little bit of depth. That black around it will give it just a little bit of depth. Okay, so we can have the vellum poking out here. We have our pattern paper there and a cheesecloth or sari silk poking out right there. And then we can have our um, thread right there. Let's see. I didn't even need to bring I need another piece of that little sorry silk because that was too small and we need some coming out from underneath a little bit or from the bottom. There we go. Okay. Okay. So let me glue them down. I'm going to use um, Fabri-Tac because some of these are fabric, some of them are not, but some of them are difficult things like um, vellum. I want it to stay. I don't care if it shows through because it's not going to show through because there's things on top of it. Okay. And then a little bit on here. It doesn't need a lot and you don't need to put down the whole thing here. That's another trick to letting it have texture and dimension is not gluing down the entire thing. Glue it in the center and then let it look like it's kind of free floating. Got little sorry fibers all over the place. All right. And then we'll put just a little up here, a little down here. Because I had the two pieces of sorry now that I tore it apart. Get that one going up here, and this one coming out of the bottom. Okay, and then we'll get our black thread, which is now mixed with white uh, or cream colored off white, sorry, silk thread, <laughs> and it's sticking to me. All right, so let's get this. Thicken however we want. This is inspired, by the way, by Shanna of Chinooki Art. Some of you probably subscribe to her or, or you know, know that she does um, She does a um, playing card, a full deck challenge, where they one by one decorate the, the full deck. So I'm just going to set that there. I don't need to glue that down because when I glue the butterfly down, he will hold the thread down.
Okay, so I'm feeling like that butterfly is not quite popping enough because there is so much dark color back there because of all the all the um, walnut stain and vintage photo that kind of spilled everywhere. Oh, that's pretty. That's perfect. <laughs> I think I got a little too much, a uh, <laughs> little too much background color. So how, what do you do with that? How do you correct that? I need, I want to lighten up underneath it so that the butterfly stands out a little more. I have depth. You can see that it's standing up and I can see the depth and I've got the texture. I've got, you know, several different things here that are giving texture and the texture on the, the card itself. But I want, um, I want some, something bright to brighten up the card so that the butterfly will pop out a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of gold, too much gold. You could use mousse or gold paint. This is actually an acrylic paint that, that I'm using that was sitting here. Um, I would might grab a Nouveau mousse and just go around the edge. And I really don't want it perfect. Um, let's see, my other... Let me see if the other one that I would like is here. Uh, da -da -da -da. It's not. Okay, so I'll make do with this one. Um, okay, so I don't want it um, even. I want it like fatter in some places, thinner in some places, just kind of here and there. So it just looks, again, uh, sporadic, splotchy, like everything else does, which gives it a much more organic look but just having the light frame around all the dark that I put on the card accidentally will make whatever is dark on top of it pop out a little bit more you could even take a little bit of gold and rub it over the top of these creases some of these creases that are in the tissue paper Okay. And I like that. I wish there was even a little bit more. I like the way the tissue paper comes off on some of these sides and sticks out there. That gives it even a little bit more um, uh, rustic look. Okay. So that's better. Um, Candy, give me just a second. I'm going to make you big in a second and show yours. Okay, so lightening up the bottom with just a gold frame makes the butterfly come out a little bit more. I, I still feel like the butterfly has too much brown and not enough black. So what I will do, maybe I'll just do that right now. We'll kind of show it so you can see what I would do. It's really, I wanted a monarch butterfly, but the size that would fit on this, this was the only one there was, and it's really orange and brown. I wanted orange and black because that black stands out better. So I'm going to take a black Posca pen and I'm going to go over some of the things that are brown and make them black, make them stand out. So I'm gonna put it on candy and let her show hers. That is so pretty. Now see, she's got a Monarch, it's perfect. It's black and even though there's a lot of dark color on the back, it really stands out because it's got a black frame on the butterfly. That's perfect. Really like that a lot. And then the last thing you can see on candies, the last thing we do is add a sentiment or a word or something like that. You can put it on both of us whenever you want. I'm going to try to get some of this a little black. Yeah, got to find your mouse in the pile of things now, huh? Okay, and he's been married 25 years. They're going out to dinner tonight. Who is? Angie. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations, Congrats. Angie. And Enjoy Perry. Dinner. Enjoy dinner. Where are you going? Maybe maybe I'll learn some new place around here to go. Where are you going, Angie? I'm glad you're feeling up to going, by the way. I'm going to try to go around the edge of this. 
because it really does need that black frame. Yeah, I think I'm going to need something. I might. Oh, I think yours looks great because it's actually a monarch. This isn't a monarch, so it doesn't I'm have my card, the outside of my card. Oh. Oh, well. So, uh, down for later. The Yeah, you'll notice the black frame will make a huge difference. You can tell on candies. So, yeah, if it was a monarch, then I wouldn't need to do this. But you know what? That's how you make do. I don't have any cheesecloth near me, so I grabbed a piece of sari silk. So, you know, if you don't have one thing, you just grab another. The point is making several layers in there, and those layers give you the depth and the interest that you need. Okay. So already that's made a huge difference, just getting that black. Uh, I think it needs a little bit more black down on the lower half. I love these Posca pens. I'm thinking about putting them on the website, just maybe even black and white. Those, those are the ones I use the most. So yeah, what a difference that made, just getting the black on there. Okay, so to show you that the process works, that it is a process and you can use the same steps and get an amazing result every time, we are going to do another one. If I don't let my Fabri-Tac dry out, we're gonna do another one and we're gonna do it with different, different colors, dif different, just using the same process. We might even use the same things, but different colors. Um, you could even pick a different focal point other than the butterfly. I happen to have butterflies sitting here now because of what we're doing. So I think I may use a butterfly again, but I do have some blue ones. Let's see here. Need another card. Oh, you know what? When I was going through my playing cards, I found these cute little snowman playing cards. <laughs> I thought it'd be really cute to do one with a Christmas theme on a snowman playing card. So while we're getting this out and getting ready um, for the next one, the Minte will be here on Monday. So I'll be getting with the sales team to decide when we are going to um, have the Minte sale. And... There will be um, a large order of Stamperia and Ranger and Finnebar and the Crafters Workshop. I love their stencils. Um, those kinds of things coming in in about a week. So shortly after Minte. So I'm going to be talking to admin to decide what we're going to do for Black Friday and that weekend. See if we want to, we always do something fun. So I'm going to be talking to admin and, and decide. Yeah. Well, I have Eric this year, so. Oh, yay. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we might be traveling Friday. Ah, uh, okay. Not so much for us, but also we have you. Pick, they have to, they want to pick them up on Saturday. So. Uh, are you meeting them halfway? I believe that's the plan right now. Okay. So then you probably would be traveling. Friday. So yeah, I don't know if we'll do a Friday or a Saturday or, uh, you know, what we'll do, but I'll get together with admin and we'll talk about it and make some decisions. Maybe we'll have, if we might, we, uh, we've always had a Black Friday sale. So we'll yeah. probably have to do something like that. We have some hot buys and some new products because all that new stuff will be in all those new brands that um, I haven't been carrying. They're all going to arrive um, in about a week. So We'll have all that stuff, which will be fun. But then we also have to have some some fun in there. We've done some games, um, sometimes even on Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know if we'll do it on Thanksgiving. My mom will be here. Maybe we will anyway. Maybe we'll bring my mom into it. That should be a bunch of laughter. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm looking for cruel this morning. Are you not? What? This afternoon. Be a little cruel this afternoon, huh? Oh, I didn't mean to be cruel. I didn't mean that. 
I just meant <laughs> gonna throw her mom under the bus. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. No, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> kind of what would it I, sounded like to me. <laughs> would I do that? <laughs> no, it'd just be a lot of fun because you know she just speaks, doesn't really think, and sometimes the things that come out of her mouth are pretty funny. So. <laughs> It's always a bowl of laughs over here. Besides, she loves you guys. So maybe I'll, we could have Doug on, the, I'll cross the way on the other table and have mom sharing my table over here and we'll just hang out and laugh and craft and hear about everybody's big Thanksgiving dinner. I haven't decided if I really want to cook this year. <laughs> thinking about it you know I will end up doing it but not so so sure that I want to all right I'm gonna grab my dryer Lente yay Angie's going to one of Utah's favorite places to eat. Well, that doesn't help me, Angie. There's a lot of those. Hot pies. <laughs> okay, a couple of years ago, I said hot buys, and somebody thought I said hot guys. And that's how we ended up with Kilt Man. Now, Angie thinks I said hot pies. <laughs> I think somebody's hungry. element there so I don't melt it. How do you look see here? Okay, so now I add some color. Um let's see. I've got oh uh, I've got some really pretty blue and green butterflies they're kind of peacock colors so i'm thinking maybe i'll i've got some pink ones too i think maybe i'll use one of these let's see if we can find one that's a good size we'll do the same thing the same process that one might be just a little large a little small I have to color that one in black. I don't feel like there's enough color there. I want more color than that. This is perfect, except it's a little bit large. But I like the butterfly. That one I like the butterfly too. Just a little large. I've probably already used the ones that are just the right size. Okay, so... If you don't have exactly what you need, what do we do? We punt, right? So we can always, <laughs> football, we can always, instead of having one, okay, this one is the same size as that one, and I would like one a little bit larger, but instead of having one that is larger, that's the size I really want, maybe I have to go to, oh, that one's a little larger. I like that one. That's good. But maybe I have to go to two smaller ones. And I put two on instead of one. Two butterflies, not a bad thing. Hi, huh, honey. Yeah. Okay, that's a little bit big. Yep. Okay. This one is probably, it's not as blue as I would want. It's more green. Hmm. 
but I'm feeling like these are a little bit too, maybe, I don't know. Candy, does yours go outside of the card? Maybe I just need to get a bigger card. Then it wouldn't be too big, right? <laughs> so, no, mine didn't go outside. Didn't go outside? <laughs> yeah, my first one, I wanted a little bit bigger, but I, I think that middle size, I've got these great big ones and then the little small ones, and I think the middle size I've used most yeah. of them. I do have some others, though. I don't think I've used the pink ones. I could probably do pink and have just the right size. It's still kind of wet. But since I'm going to put color on it, I'm not going to really fret over it. I'm just going to leave that there like that. Okay. Hi, Julie. Hello, hello. Let's see. Sorry, I'd rather have a nice pork pie with cranberry sauce than a hot guy show up at my place. <laughs> Even if he was in a guild. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well... That's where Laura differs from her mother. <laughs> That's funny. I don't know if I had a pork pie. I believe that's a Canadian thing. I've had a lot of Canadian things, but I don't think I've had a pork pie. But, you know. I've had a venison pie. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Meat like a meat pie made with yeah, venison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that I think about it. Yeah, my mom used to make pie, meat pies when we were kids. But um, I don't never. We didn't eat a lot of pork then, because we had buffalo and we hunted, so we had venison and elk and you know stuff like that. So never really bought a lot of pork. All right, but I think the pork pie is it. Is it more like an apple pie, but it's pork, Laura? Is it more like something you hold in your hand than something that you cut out of a big dish? And we're like that. I don't know. I'm not sure, sure. handheld things. Jumbo size, yeah. Um, a jumbo. I do have some jumbo size playing cards as well, and they are fun and they work. Any size. I have some little teeny tiny ones too, that um, are fun to alter as well for little teeny tiny books. Okay. So what's our next step after we put my vellum sliding? After we put our tissue paper down. And we need to get some color on it, right? So we're going to drip some color on it. And since I'm using this, but it's really more green than I want. Um, I do want blue. I'm going to, I am going to put the lid on this before we have a glue spill. <laughs> Bad enough to have an ink spill. All right. What do I got over here? Oh, glue spill. I do have peacock feathers. That's both green and blue. So I will add that to, hmm, what have I got here? That's faded jeans, but there's not enough blue in the, um, not enough blue in the butterflies, I think. Okay, here we go again with the ink. Let's see if we can handle it. I just filled mine on purpose this time and then just dipped them. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an idea too. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to put some vintage photo, some walnut stain, and then I'm going to add some peacock feathers. All right, that is not, I think, I feel like I should just stick a, um, a brush into it and flick it with the brush like I do the paint, that it might actually work better. I'm just going to, better for me. I'm just going to screw it on as I use it instead of actually sitting it there even if I need more. <laughs> so I had walnut stain and a vintage photo. I do like the rusty look that came out of it and I, I'm i not sure if it was the walnut stain or if it was the walnut stain mixing with the vintage photo. But that's kind of a cool, I think rusty hinge would look really cool too. Rusty it, I don't know. The oxide, I didn't like it. No? So what are you using this time? I used the Distress Mica Stain Shiny mm -hmm. Bobble. Mm. Cool. Um, okay. Some tea dye and some walnut. All right. So give it a little bit of water. Oh, you missed the fun. I spilled the whole bottle. <laughs> Doug just walked in. <laughs> he 
Yeah, I didn't screw it right back on because I thought I was going to need more. Set it down, tipped it over. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, it was. That's why that towel's down there ready to go into the laundry. <laughs> okay. Aww. Two points. For, for that for little that. thing? Uh -huh. How about just one bite? How much is that? A quarter of a point. Okay. So it would, it would go down to zero. Mmm. <laughs> I feel like I should have sprayed the brown, dried it, and then sprayed the peacock and dried it because they're kind of mixing together. Okay, they're kind of mixing together, but I'm getting a real patina look there. And I think it's the heat against one of the oxides, probably the um, walnut stain that's giving me the rusty look. And I like that. I like that a lot. I'm getting ideas of what I could do for steampunky. Um, but I need some more vintage photo here. <laughs> okay, got these open corners with nothing on them. Can't have that. All right, let's spritz that a bit. And right up. decided to mop some of that up with um, the fabric that's sitting here instead of wasting it on a baby wipe and careful where I set that. It might melt something. Okay, let's get some black ink. No, let's do so. Let's do the stamping first and then the black ink splatters. Oh, I got all these little sorry fibers sticking to everything. Everything, everywhere. You got a couple different sizes of, of uh, cards there. That's awesome. Yeah, these are, I don't know what they are. They're, <laughs> they're not playing cards. They're just. Mm -hmm. I have some from from games. They're not like these type playing cards, but they are from different games. They're quotes from famous ladies. Is what oh. Are. That's like kind of cool. This one says, if a woman hasn't met the right man by the time she's 24, she may be lucky. Deborah <laughs> oh, wow. The only sin is <laughs> mediocrity, Martha Grant. Martha. Graham. Wow. 
All right, I want to stamp right there, but that is really wet. And if I do that... I have never wanted to be a man. I have often wanted to be effective as a woman, but I never thought that trousers, was, trousers would do the trick. Yeah. Roosevelt. <laughs> I get that. The quotes are nice. I just don't like the cards themselves. The pictures, yeah. They're stupid. So, they don't well, I was going to... Well, I was going to say, then you kind of look, put the altar the side with the pictures on it and leave the quote on the back. The quote's on the front. Oh, the okay. Leave the quote on one side, <laughs> which now becomes the back, and alter the, the back. Part of it, yeah. it has the sucky pictures. I just altered the whole thing on this one. Yeah. You no, know, he's, yeah, alter, put coffee dye paper on the back or something. Or yeah, on the front, on the back. So it can be written on. But yeah, I have some that are just like, math um you know flashcards yeah so not like there's really anything on those i want to keep <laughs> so, okay so we got our stamping now let's get a little splattering let's get this ink out of the way oh that was close okay a little bit of black splatter here Oh, Candy, I'm going to have to mute for just one second, okay? Okay. I'll be right back. Sure, she will. She's just leaving me, ladies. Hope everybody's having a good Saturday. I mean, Thursday. Thursday. See, when you retire, ladies, you forget what day of the week it is. <laughs> We've had Charlie since yesterday, even though this isn't our week to have him. And so he's, it's kind of like a weekend for me. <laughs> he's been running me ragged. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> she filled her whole bottle. Spill the spray. Yeah, one step is to spill the spray. <laughs> hey, it works. I need something lighter on these. Um. I'm back. Thank God. <laughs> I did hear. I hope you're having a good Saturday <laughs> on Thursday. Oh, and I said, like, wait, wait, wait. Saturday is Thursday. <laughs> That's he gets crap together. That's funny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let me dry this black splatter. problem with a little bit thicker paint is that you get these great big splatters instead of nice thin little tiny splatters. I like the thin little tiny ones and uh, I like a little more down there. Yeah, those little teeny tiny ones. Okay, let's get a little bit of the gold. I did really like the gold splatters on it as well. And I think instead of bringing it out of the jar, I think I'm going to try putting a brush right into it. <laughs> Didn't know how far down it was. Stuck the entire. Well, that's just not working very well. Let's try this. Nope. Doesn't work very well. Consistency-wise, it just doesn't want to 
it doesn't stick to the brush, which I guess is good. A, a spray needs to be able to spray out of the, the nozzle if it's not sticking to the brush to bring it out and splatter it. So, okay, so get a little bit of gold. do with my cheesecloth. <laughs> All right, let's dry that one real quick. That's why I never use cheesecloth. I'm always losing it. <laughs> Yeah. Had a whole long piece. You think I can find it? Yeah. You know, gauze works too. That's another thing, guys. There's you always something. I had this one all colored, ready to go. <laughs> There's always something to substitute. If you don't have any cheesecloth and you've got some gauze, use some gauze. You know, whatever. Okay, so now we want the piece of vellum. Found it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Let's give it a little bit of edge distress was it on the floor no <laughs> that's where i was looking i couldn't find always it on the floor huh i can't find something candy always tells me look on the floor <laughs> okay so we'll have that and then we need a little bit of dress pattern i just had some right here where did it go that piece isn't big enough let's grab another oh. Tear off a little hunk here, crumple it up. And dress pattern is great because it's already vintage color. So works nicely. Okay, and then Let's see. Last time I used sari silk. So this time maybe I will use something um, a little different. Either that white. It's kind of a gauzy fabric. Or this piece of lace that has blue in it. Um, I thought there was another just piece of white lace. Yeah, there's this one too. Okay, I don't want it to be all nice. I don't even know which is the front side. So I guess that's I don't want it to be all nice and neat. I just want it to be kind of cut, you know, ragged. However, wherever, not uh, like it's torn. Well, I don't know. Does this stuff tear? Maybe it tears. Oh, it does. Holy cannoli. <laughs> I could have just torn it and had a torn edge. But now it's not going to tear. But maybe I can get it to fray a bit. That would be awesome. I get it to fray and some bits and pieces stick out here and there. That'd be cool. Okay, so that white might help. I'm thinking maybe the white will help the butterfly pop out a little bit because of the dark background. I, I know that I go heavy handed on stuff and I still I still did it on the, the ink. I still went a little heavy on the ink. Although I got some good um, peacock color in there. And what I love is that peacock color when I gave it the heat it really turned patina. So that's why I was thinking that Rusty Hinge and Peacock might be really cool and look like rust and patina. Oh, maybe I should use this little, uh, I'll see, maybe I'll need that on top. Maybe instead of uh, thread, maybe it needs a little bit of black netting as a little frame for the butterfly. Okay, what happened to our butterfly? I blew them all away. He's on the floor. I blew all the butterflies. Oops. I blew all the butterflies away. They're all on the floor. Well, the ones that were sitting on my desk anyway. Okay, and so I thought that was going to be more blue, but since it turned really patina, this butterfly actually really works. So... See if I can just take get that white edge off. Let 
Let's see. You know, the white edge around these die cut things, butterfly as it is, um, I don't want to have to cut all around it and get that white edge off. Kathy wants to know if anyone knows if you can emboss with embossing powder on fabric. Yeah, you can. Yes, Burn absolutely. Fabric. Yep, you can on fabric, on leather. Uh, I did I did it on a live once on leather. Um, yeah, pretty much anything. And on. you don't even have to have embossing ink. Really, you can emboss with anything that is wet that the embossing powder will stick to. Because the embossing powder is just tiny, tiny bits of plastic. And then when the heat hits it, it melts it. And then it's really going to stick. So even if you used water and it sticks to the water and then you emboss it. Yeah, it's pretty cool on, on um, fabric. Yeah, one, I remember one day, uh, let's see, I don't remember what our thing was that we were doing, but I remember taking a strip of leather, making it rectangle, and putting an eyelet and a ring in it and um, turning it into a keychain and embossing something on it. Is that what I remember? All right, so I'm going to make just a, some of this stuff that's brown, a little more black, like its body. The black gives it a little more depth. And you could even take your Nouveau Drops, Perfect Pearls, any of those, and go. Um, I like to take the Jewel Drops and go down the body because they're translucent and you can see through them, kind of like a real real bodies, often you can kind of sort of see through them. Really cool effect. All right, let's see if that's enough black up some of the green had a hair on it and it just moved the paint I'm gonna need to let that dry or dry it <clears throat> cannolis oh she's going to get cannolis you are bringing enough for the group right Julie <laughs> somehow I doubt it <laughs> Don't hold your breath, Margie. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> okay, so let's see. We've got the vellum and the tissue. And then we've got a piece of white lace. Um, that way. And then we had, I could put a piece of black lace or this or the black thread. I really do like the thread because it brings the black in, but it doesn't overpower it with some big you know piece of black something or other it's just uh, it's more of an accent so now I gotta get some more black thread off of here <laughs> I could walk across the room and just get my black thread but you know if I go to use this I'm sure I'll want it frayed anyway so I just as well fray it now and use the black thread <laughs> Two birds, right? <laughs> okay. And I'm going to like that black against the white lace. And get the thread going a direction that I would like. A bunch of little pieces. And then our butterfly on top of that. Yeah, and I, I still do feel like the um, uh, card needs um, something lighter around it. But this time, I'm going to do that a little bit differently. 
I'm going to take the spray that we dripped on it <clears throat> and the little brush that I brought over and see if I can take a little bit of this gold and just go around it. And I don't want it to be nice and even, a nice uh, line. <clears throat> I just want it kind of grungily around it as a frame. So, because when this dries, it's kind of weird color when I put it down like this. I remember the first time I used it, I thought that's not gold. Um, but when it dries, it's really cool. It's a good, it's a good gold. But I get really tired of these companies um, spritzers that don't work. I wish somebody would invent. One of you want to get rich, just invent a pump pump top, a spray pump top for all of our medium media that not the mediums, they won't go through uh, for all of our media that will actually spray and not get totally clogged up. Good luck with that. Yeah. But you know, if somebody could, that would be an amazing invention and guaranteed make you a mint. So, all right, so we get some of this spray around to get some gold, making it a little bit thicker. I actually kind of like that a little bit thicker. I'll give it a chance to dry and the gold will come out. And I think what I'm even going to do is put a little bit, uh, I wanted to get it on these wrinkles, not all over there, but... I want to get just a little bit over the top of the wrinkles like you would with your finger and mousse. But the brush, you know, brushes are soft, so it just kind of folded around the, <laughs> the wrinkle and went right down to the paper underneath it as well. And it just gives a little hint of gold here and there that it really kind of needs. I might go back and put some of this on the other one too, because this is really going to brighten it up. Still have the depth of the color because it's that dark color that gives it the depth. We'll still have that depth, but we will have the brightness around it that will allow it to highlight the focal point being the butterfly. Okay. We've got a fabric tack in the center just to stick on what we're sticking on. It has some layers going here. I like that. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right, let's see if I can get some of that glue off my fingers before I... Oh, no. thread. My thread is sticking to me. I know. <laughs> before I pick up the thread and try to make it work, <laughs> if I can get some of that glue off my fingers. I don't want the ends poking out. And these are really short little strips of, of thread, so it makes it a little more difficult. But... Pull that apart a bit so some of it comes down below and some of it up above. There we go. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my goodness. Yep, thread sticking to me. Sticking to everything. Fabri-Tac on our butterfly. Yeah, they're asking about Patreon. You're shutting it down, right? Oh, yes, I am going to shut down Patreon. So, in fact, I'll go in and do that this afternoon. So, if you're a member, don't worry about having to leave or figure out how to do that. I'm just going to go in and shut it down. Um, then you won't get charged another month. I would much rather you um, use that money for the subscription box to get yourself the cool products. And then we'll spend the time together um, doing a laugh and craft with the, the box items. That's what I would really like. So if you're in Patreon and for some reason you haven't already signed up for the box, I'd really love to have you do that. You're going to love the stuff in it, and we'll still get our monthly laugh and craft, um, but with those items. 
I think everybody in Patreon is already signed up. But, and yeah, so if you have a crafty friend that um, likes new and different and fun and exciting things, you might want to tell them about the subscription box. There, I, I'm not going to say that there will never be anything in there that you've never seen before, because there will be, because sometimes there's things that we've seen that we just absolutely love. And if I can get them, you know, better price or something and get them in the box. But for the most part, it's mostly going to be things that you're not seeing at Hobby Lobby and Joann's, um, things that I haven't had at sales, um, you know, fun products like that. The things I'm looking for things that inspire us things that are um, fun and exciting and things that we can do multiple projects with. So there, I'm, I'm not looking, unless there's something really fabulous, I'm not looking for things that we use it once and then it's done and gone. And that's that. Um, I want things that we have a laugh and craft together and we can make some things and maybe use something um, and you still have plenty more to go make a bunch of other stuff with as well. So um, there's going to be quite a bit in these boxes. So I'm pretty excited about that. And okay, so there's the second one. Now let's compare them. The gold hasn't dried. When the gold dries, it does look like gold. So the process works. Just repeat the same process. You could use a different focal point. You could use different things to layer. But the process of how you get there, you know, put a base on so there's some kind of background, something that can hold color that kind of covers or mostly covers or partly covers the card that gives some texture, some interest, um, good background and could hold some color. Another thing that you could do, we did with the index cards. Let's see, I thought I brought in. Oh, <laughs> I did. I brought in the wrinkled egg cards. from North Carolina, Flat Rock, North Carolina. Another thing that you could do is take, let's see, grab from book pages right here. There's a lot of ways you can make the base. So if you just have the, the process down, then you can use the process you could make a dozen ATCs, a dozen playing cards, a dozen tags, and they could all look different, but all be using the same process. So you could take this um, for a base. Um, yeah, that should stick, even though it's even though it's all shiny, and then put some book page down. And then what you have to do is let the book page dry, the glue dry anyway, not the book page. You could use the pattern paper directly on there. We just want a base that will hold some color when we put it on as a background, and it doesn't have to be this much color. Let's do another one that's that's quite a bit different here. Um, maybe if I give it a little shot of heat, it'll dry on low. Don't want to just melt the, I don't know, does a glue stick dry with heat? <laughs> or does it just take a while? It could, you could use regular glue. We just always do this with glue sticks. So I grabbed that, but um, this one isn't even sticky. Maybe it's not going to stick to the shiny. Yeah, what, glue right. stick? Glue stick will stick. To the shiny? I've used it. Yeah, I've used it. Yeah, I thought I had to. I do. A lot of times I'll put the glue stick down, then put the book page down, let it dry, mm -hmm. and then rip it up. That's what I'm doing. But well, you got to um, dry heat. I think it just melts the glue. Melts it. Yeah. 
All right, so then I'm just gonna go over here and use some PVA glue, just a little bit. What and and I, I'm gonna put some, oh, a stupid one. <laughs> stupid one that I need to get rid of. I won't name it and make it feel bad. Make it feel bad. <laughs> Elmer's. <laughs> Yeah, that never worked for me. No. It worked for people. It, it never, it's yeah. never worked. Not even in school did it work for me. Oh, really? Yeah. It works. Um, it works on, you know, I mean, it works on other things, but um, it's not working on this shiny stuff. So, so I just put some PVA glue down. Okay. And then I covered it. I didn't cover it. I just put some book page here or there, here or there, here and there. Get some of this glue up and we'll give that just a little heat and see if we can get that to dry. I'm going to put it on low. I did go ahead and put PVA glue over the whole thing, hoping that when it covered it, it gave, would give it a little bit of a coating that things would stick to better than the shiny side, the shiny part of a of the card. Hi, Sylvia. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even see you come in. I am so sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sylvia's flat out on the floor. Hard to get up. Her junk in the trunk is heavy. <laughs> Join the club, Sylvia. Join the club. <laughs> uh, Toby says, do you need us to call? What? Uh, I just flipped. I didn't see that. Is that. Do you need us to call an ambulance? Do you need us to call for help? I'm sure Sylvia's kidding. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> uh, the sketching Spitfire. I love that. Okay. So if you just came in, I don't know how long you've been here because... I obviously wasn't paying too much attention. We were showing <laughs> <laughs> I was too busy trying not to spill my ink again <laughs> rather than watch chat. Um, we're showing yeah. a process, a system, a process that you can use as a template when you want to alter a card or an, and make an ATC <laughs> or um, a tag or something. And uh, you don't know how to get started or you don't know what to do. Here is a system. Here's a process that you can use. And it'll work every time. And you can just change up what you use, uh, the product that you use, but use the same system. So we started with a card. It's just a playing card. It could be an ATC. It could be um, a tag or, you know, whatever. Uh, this is obviously not dry enough. Not going to work. But yeah, you have to let it dry for about 15 minutes. I thought maybe the heat would help it, but... Um, Okay, so use the card, and then we put, uh, I just uh, spread some PVA glue on it and put a piece of tissue, just regular tissue paper that you put in gift bags, white tissue paper on it, crunched it up just a little bit, put some PVA over the top of it, and then dried it. That gives it a coating so that things will stick to it, but it also gives it some texture. And then once it's dried, you can tear it off all the way around. I kind of like it sometimes when stuff is left sticking out. That's okay. Or you can cut it with scissors so that it's perfectly uh, around if you want. That is completely up to you. And then once we have that torn out, it's ready to go and dried, then we took some uh, color. Now today we used oxide sprays. We didn't spray them. We just opened them up and dripped some color. Um, we used, I used uh, vintage photo and walnut stain and and a little bit of hickory smoke and then on this one instead of hickory smoke i used peacock feathers and that's where i got that patina look back behind there then we spritz that with water because oxide is water soluble and it reacts to the water and so then it starts to spread so you move the card around or take your dryer and move it around with your with the dryer and uh so that it's covered or mostly covered and then we just made sure that that was dry first. Then we um, took a stamp. So I'm giving you the steps. So you could take these steps down. And so for color, you could take, if you don't have any sprays, no big deal. You could take your oxide and put it right on your mat or on an acrylic block or on a, a ceramic plate or anything. And then take a paintbrush and dip it in water, add water to it, get it all wet, and then spread that around on the card. It's the exact same thing. It does not need to be a spray. Um, if you don't have those, you can use watercolor. 
you would use anything that's going to give you some liquid color to move around. You could dilute some acrylic paint. I would make sure that it's very, very, very diluted, though, because you don't need um, a lot. You just, you know, very diluted um, acrylic paint. OK, and then after we did that, um, then we stamped it. So you could use a script stamp. So any words doesn't even matter if you have maybe, um, you know, a botanical type of um, uh, what is it, a label kind of thing. You could use that. Anything that has words on it. I've got some great big background stamps that have words. And I could just take this little piece here or I could take some music and just stamp a little bit here and there. All that does is add some layers that adds to the texture because they're peeking out here or there. And you know there's so many layers to it. That's what gives it the interest. Okay, after that, then we start the decorating part. Oh, I'm sorry. After we do the stamping, then we splattered it uh, with black and gold. And you could also use white. Um, I just took some acrylic paint and put it in here and then watered it down, way watered it down. The thinner it is, the smaller splatters you'll get. The thicker it is, the bigger dots you'll get. And just splattered some black on here. You can see them up around there. And then I also did some gold because I like the way the gold looks in the splatters when it dries. All right. So after splattering, then we were ready to... Uh, and you can use any color, anything that is that is liquid. You could use gouache. You could even use um, uh, writing ink. Anything that is liquid, you can use to do that, to splatter on that. Okay, so then we need some layers. We put some layers here to give it some, not only some interest, but some visual interest, but some texture um, and some dimension. So we went with a piece of vellum that's in the back. And then a piece of uh, pattern paper. And we just tore a little piece of vellum. That's what this is. And then the piece of pattern paper, we just tore a little piece, crumpled it up, and then opened it up and, and set it down. And then we did um, candy use cheesecloth. I didn't go get my cheesecloth. So on this one, I used sorry silk. On this one, I used a piece of white lace. And then we took some black thread. And just pulled out a length of black thread, wound it into circles, pulled it apart to put underneath the butterfly, and then set the butterfly on it. This butterfly was orange and brown, and I really wanted it orange and black because the brown doesn't pop un enough because there's a lot of brown on the background. So I just took a black Posca pen and went around the outside and gave it a black frame. So now it looks more like a monarch. And this one as well. I think I need to give it a little more black where some of these big brown pieces are, but I did go around the outside as well as the body um, to give that black as well. And then I felt like I'd gone a little heavy handed on the color um, and it's awfully dark and I want my butterfly to pop a little more. And so I gave a little bit of gold around the edge of the card and that could be done with mousse, with acrylic paint. I just took this spray, opened it up and used a little brush and kind of brushed it around so that it would be very inconsistent and and everywhere. So then it was just showing that where did I set it? I just had a, I just had a card in my hand. It's probably on the floor, isn't it, Candy? Yep, yep. it's on the floor. <laughs> that any of those steps, that process will always work. You could use anything as the focal point. You can use anything to layer. The steps will always work, even on the bottom. We need to do something to create some texture on the glossy card so that it will hold some color. You can either rough it up with a, with some sandpaper. You could put the tissue over it. You could do the um, bottom layer of a napkin. That would work. You could put some glue down and then put some book page on. And then when it's dry, you just kind of rip it up and tear it up gently. And then it stays in certain spots. And so now it can hold some color. So... What do I have? Do I have anything else over here that would be a good focal point besides butterflies? Let's see. How about one of these pretty flowers? There's a really pretty blue flower and maybe I'll even put a little butterfly with it. Okay, so I'm going to use this one as my focal point this time. And 
Um, I don't, I, I hope that will hold some color because I did put glue all the way out there, but if it won't, I might end up putting just some um, dress pattern down on there or some uh, tissue paper just to give it something to be able to hold, um, hold some color. So I'm going to start with a little bit of vintage photo, always a good base. And another thing that you could do on the bottom is just coat it with gesso. In that case, I like to do white and because you can do anything with color on top and it's going to see, it'll be the focal point instead of the gesso being the focal point. And if you want to add some texture, just take your heat gun to the gesso to dry it and leave it on there a little bit longer and you can get some really cool bubbles uh, out of the gesso with the heat as it's drying. So let's do some vintage photo here. And what I found is that if they kind of mix, then I get a little bit more mud. And also the, if I leave heat to vintage photo and walnut stain, I get a rusty look. So I'm gonna do just the vintage photo first. Let it run. Doesn't, I see I don't have the wrinkles in this one that I have in the tissue paper. So it doesn't run quite the same and not sticking here quite the same either. But let me dry it and see what we have. <laughs> Does one color look better after spilled than another? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Violet, Sylvia. Uh oh, we just lost Candy. <laughs> she just got thrown completely out. Oh, that sucks. It's happened several times today, Candy. Oh, we're not, what's going on today? <laughs> yep, just got thrown out again. <laughs> I think I bumped it. I something. I, I'm hitting something on my mouse. Yep. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so I I think whoops, I think I'm gonna have a little bit um, difficult time on here because of the gloss. I don't think it's gonna hold the color as well. Um, there is some vintage photo on there, and maybe if I just leave it sit there, it will dry on its own, and then just dry there and maybe maybe kind of sorta uh, soak into the card. But I'm gonna add some peacock feathers here. And when I put heat to this, if I leave the heat on long enough, it really turns patina. And I do really like that, especially if I'm trying to get something rusty or steampunky. Okay, a little bit of water spritz on this one. So what I'm giving you is a step-by-step -step process. I've had at least a half a dozen people message me and say, can you teach us how to decorate a card? or decorate a tag, you know, or decorate an ATC. Um, and as I ask questions, what I'm finding is that what people are looking for is some kind of a process. If it's not something that you've done a lot of, and you see things that you absolutely love, but you don't know how to get to that, you know, put it down and people just say, oh, just do what comes naturally. Well, it doesn't always come naturally. I, I, it honestly doesn't for, you know, it, it didn't always for me. Even now it doesn't always. So if I can give you some processes, and this is one process that will work every single time. If you use the same steps every time, you can change up what you are using on every step. So don't say, I don't have this or I don't have that because it doesn't matter. There's always something you can substitute for it. And that's why I just told you three or four things you could use on the bottom and all the things you can use inside and that, that your focal point could be anything. It doesn't have to be a butterfly. So I'm just showing you how you could do it with that book page. You could cover the whole thing with book page, not just part of it. In fact, I would like some book page more out on the edges because my focal point focal points kind of skinny so I would I will see some book page so that's awesome okay let's see I 
I will say it is much more difficult to do the process without having something down as a base that covers the whole thing. Because even though I put glue over the whole thing, just PVA glue, it's still having a hard time sticking to the surface. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, then the next thing we did was stamp, might be kind of wet. And again, if I had something down, even some clear, clear gesso, you could put clear gesso, just so you have some gesso down to work. If you wanted to see the, the um, card through it, put some clear gesso down. And I'm getting spray on my stamp. It is water-based, so I'm not super concerned about that. I can clean it off, but that's not, you know, not what I wanted. I want it to be dry. It's having a hard time drying. but And I'm getting peacock feathers in my black archival ink. That's not good. Again, Margie. <laughs> I didn't do what she did. <laughs> As Margie says, I'm here to show you what not to do. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'll come off because it's um, it's uh, water based. And the thing about your stamp pads, don't think if you've got some color on a stamp pad that you've ruined it. You have not. That color is only sitting on the surface. All you need to do is wipe it off. Seriously. And it's good as new. So don't think you've ruined it because you accidentally, you know, or contaminated it. You haven't contaminated it. Okay. Well, you contaminated it, but you can save it. <laughs> but it doesn't stay. It's literally just sitting on the surface. So, okay. So I'm going to give it some. All right. I got four done. Yay. Make it, go ahead and make it big on you and show them while I do this. And I'm going to try to pull this together real quickly because I want to come back on the screen and finish or just recap our stuff. That's pretty. Now see how she used more than one butterfly? Oh, and I didn't even put my sentiment on the others. No wonder it was missing something. <laughs> we, knew, we knew it was missing something. That's pretty. Candy's muted. Why are you muted, Candy? I don't know. Or did you not realize you were muted? I didn't know I was muted. <laughs> well, my son you, came in a minute ago and I was talking to him. So I just were you over there talking to yourself? Yes, I was. Oh, I figured you're not just going to hold it up and not say anything. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. oh, like, this one has black and gold thread. I know you probably can't see the gold thread. Oh, though. yeah, I can. They might not be able to, but I can. <laughs> I like it. That's pretty. And then the first one. That was the first one. So that's nice. all four of them. Yeah. And so everyone is different, yet everyone used the same process. She used the same process to get to all of them. And I'm going to use the same process on this one. And in about 60 seconds, put this one together. So I use the piece of vellum as the bottom on the others. So I'll use a piece of vellum as the bottom on this one. I got out one piece of vellum, and so I could I could tear it into little strips, tear it into strips, and then tear the strips into little strips like this. I could make yeah, a couple dozen out of one sheet of vellum. Just yeah. get a little there. Okay. They look way better in person than they do on screen. Too. They do. They do look way better in person. They're they're I don't know, and they look they're going to look better when they dry, but um, but she's right. They look way better in person. Okay, so I might on this one, because I have some book page underneath, and it's almost um, kind of hidden now, I think I might use book page as a layer in here. And I would like to ink that up just a bit. And I'm looking at my desk, and there's all this stuff. I think I might just get some of this. Oh, I wanted the gold, not necessarily the black. I'll get some of that on there, a little bit of the gold, and a little of that peacock feather as well. Okay. And I'll put that. Actually, I might put that underneath because I'm going to do a flower this time. All right. And then 
I've got this little piece of lace that has um, some blue and green in it. I'll set that there. My vellum is trying to roll up on me. Okay. And maybe I don't want thread because um, it's a flower. A flower doesn't really need thread, but maybe it needs um, just a little bit more greenery as the thing that's behind it supporting my focal point. So maybe a couple of um, couple of little greeneries. What do we have here? That. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put a couple of these things on it, but I need to start gluing these down. Again, I'm going to use Fabri-Pak just so that I don't have to switch back and forth. And I'm only going to put it right down the middle. Put that piece of paper down. I don't need to put the whole thing. In fact, I want the whole thing to kind of float freely. So I'll either just put a glob in the middle or put it down the middle because when it floats, floats freely, then it looks like it's coming up and it gives dimension as well. So there is that. All right, and what happened to our flower? Here's our flower. Okay, that blue, I didn't put, I should have put the flower on before I glued that down because that blue seems a little uh, too strong blue behind the flower you can't see the blue flower. So I think what it needs is just maybe a piece of, um, what does it need? Does it need a little, just a little piece of pattern paper? I'll just look for something else to layer with. You know, anything doesn't. Um, you know what, my look at music paper. Oh yeah, music paper would be great. I think I did, I do, I do, I do have some right here. I was gonna say, you probably have some. I think that might look good on it. Okay, I think you're right. This one's called the low-backed car. <laughs> okay, I'm going to crumple this up. I should have... Oh, this is so old. Look what just happened. <laughs> I, I can try spraying it and see if it works. But this is an old, old, old hymnal. And I well, forgot about don't that. Don't really wrinkle it too much. Just, just a little bit. Thanks, Sylvia. Um, have fun picking up your granddaughter. Be careful. Yay. Okay. You have fun too. I can't imagine a girl. <laughs> Charlie's with his poppy fixing his. Uh, they're they're altering his side by side, so he's been helping. Oh, he thinks wow. it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's thrown me to the curb, ladies. That's awesome. <laughs> that gives you some crafting time, right? <laughs> You're like, it's about time. <laughs> I need my time. I'm even going to let the top of this greenery pop up. And I'm going to put um, just a couple of them. A couple little dabs here and there. Little dab will do ya. So that it holds up there and down here. And I'll put one little dab under that music paper there. And then I'll just tear these greeneries off so they stop at the bottom of the card. Oh, this stuff needs to dry. Everything's sticking to me. Everything's sticking to me. And I got to cook yeah. some crap this. My hands are a mess. <laughs> yeah. Then we'll get our focal point. So I'm just going to put a dot up here and a tiny bit here or there down. So something will grab. Something will grab, hold, and stick. There we go. So that was really fast and that was without any planning or thinking about it. So if you took a minute and thought about it and thought, okay, well, what would I like? But actually the color in the back turned out perfectly. It's a perfect accent. I still think it needs a frame so that it won't just be blue and blue and blue. And I think the gold frame will work just fine on that. And I might not do the whole thing, but give you an idea of what I will do. I'll just get some of this gold like I did. Everything needs to dry. When this comes out, it's just like yellow and then it dries and it's a bright, brilliant gold. So I don't get that, but you know, I'm not a chemist, so I'm not going to worry about it. I just like using it. It does come out really pretty. And all the paint on the bottom isn't even dry, so... I'm not going to put it over all the spots where the peacock 
uh, spray is not dry. Otherwise, they'll just blend together and probably make mud. Who knows? So, okay. I'll wait till that dries and then see if it needs a touch of something else. But meanwhile, same process, same system. If you need to write down the steps, just so that you can use that same system, uh, same process on anything. Um, pieces of fabric, pieces of lace, pieces of paper, whatever to layer. Pick your focal point. Pick the colors that you put down in relation to what you pick your focal point as. And you can do uh, decorate uh, anything. And yeah, they do look way better in person than they do on screen. I will agree with that. And they also always look better. Anything that uses wet media always looks better after it's dry. Not exactly sure why, but because you think that it's nice and bright while it's wet, but it always looks better after it's dry. Okay. And my mat is clean. That's how easy it is. Yay. Yeah. Oh, I love these mats. You got to show them. Look at this. These mats, oh, these are the, the new, um, 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 what are they? Oh, shoot. I forgot. To, <laughs> I forgot the name of them. Oh, goodness. How could I do that? Um, Glassboard. Glassboard glass Studios. Glassboard Studios. These are the Glassboard Studios mats. They look just like the Tim Holtz and all the other glass mats, but I'm telling you, they are not just like all the other glass mats. Do you see how Candy just cleaned that up with a baby wipe? Well, yeah. actually, I just use a little bit of, um, I've been trying not to use as much baby wipe, so I have this yeah. cheap uh, spray. $1 cleaner I got from Dollar uh, Tree. Yeah. Spray it on there and wipe it off. Well, at retreat, I had glue and it's stuff on my yeah. Yeah, uh, that what does work. Yeah, that I let um, that I let dry. I did not clean it up right away, and um, I came back and I had glue dried all over it and was a total mess. And I took a baby wipe and just started, you know, cleaning it like we always do. I did not have to get out a scraper. The baby wipe literally made it start rolling up, and it it came off so much easier. So yeah, this mat does not leave this desk; it stays right here. I'll put something else on top of it, but I love it. I'm not no longer using the other glass mats. Maybe I'll put them over on the mixed media table for that. That's but, where I put mine. Yeah, but I sure like these. So let me get um flipped back here. Thank you for putting that across the bottom because I do just want to remind you, there we are. I do just want to remind you that the website hppcreate.com is open. It is unlocked now. So anybody who is interested in checking out the subscription box, it is available for you to go in there and you do not need a code. Just go in there and it's right there. It'll tell you right what to do. You can read all about it. I think there's a, if I remember right, it says um, read more or learn more or something. And you can click right there and learn all about it and um, subscribe if you want. And this is the one where our Happy Paper People um, journal is going to be in this first um, subscription box, the Happy Paper box with the name, the winning name was chosen by Laura Williams. So Laura gets her first subscription box free. And don't forget to be with us Saturday night. I forgot that this is a fifth Saturday and we always do a Laugh and Craft on fifth Saturday. I don't know why I was thinking it was a first because we just had the fourth. So it is a fifth Saturday. So we do a Laugh and Craft on the fifth Saturday, but we will yeah, that is you, is it? Uh, we will um, announce the winners of the giveaway, the giveaway that we had out there. It was only out there for four and a half days, but we got a bunch, a bunch of entries. So that is super awesome. So somebody's going to be announced as the winner, and then they are going to get to tell us who their friend is that they're going to give the second box to. Because what there will be one winner, and then whoever um, whoever you want to give a box to, both of you will get a uh, your first subscription box free. So this is the only box that this book is going to be in. People keep asking me that. This is the only box that this book is going to be in. And yes, you can get this book or others similar or, or like it um, elsewhere, but it does not say Happy Paper People on it. 
This was engraved specific or embossed specifically debossed. It was debossed specifically for us. So it is, um, it's awesome. I do love that different. Thank you, Margie. It was a fun project. And I hope that it gave some of you who have not done it before, or maybe have hesitated to, um, to decorate a tag or a card or an ATC or something and not sure, um, what, you know, where to start. That's the question I always get is I see what I like. I know what I like. I know the outcome, but I don't know how to get there. I don't know how to start. So we want to give you some um, roadmaps, some just a process. And there's a process, some steps that you can use to get a great result every single time. Julie, yes, this is a Stamperia Aqua Color gold. That's what that is. Um, if you weren't here at the very beginning, the Minte will be here on Monday. So I'll be getting with the uh, sales team to see when everybody's available that we can do the Minte sale. And then I'll be getting with the admin team to uh, talk about um, Thanksgiving weekend. We have to do some kind of uh, fabulous uh, Friday. Uh, you know, just lost it. What is it? What, what kind of Friday Black is Friday. it? Black Friday. <laughs> Black all over my screen. Why couldn't I, I couldn't remember? Black Friday sale because that's tradition. We've always done a Black Friday sale. And I do have some hot buys. We could do some hot buys with that. And we will have all kinds of new products. There's an order, a large order on the way with Stamperia and Ranger and Prima and Craft Consortium. Some of the paper that you've seen that Candy and I had um, that it's, yeah, it's, I ordered it all candy. <laughs> mm. I ordered it all. Wonderful. <laughs> I love it. I uh, absolutely love it. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Um, Ranger. Oh, oh, uh, let me say this. Tim Holtz is bringing out a new color this, um, Saturday, right? This Saturday morning. That's yeah. only two days from now. I, um, went ahead and ordered some of the sets of the color on pre-order. So if you, and I have to look up the price, I have literally been through 5,000 products, finding all the things that we want. Guys, I've got some of the cool memory, we are memory keepers things that we've wanted. Um, yeah, I did it. We opened the website and I did it. I jumped in and, and I'm going to get everything we want and bring everything that I'm allowed to at a discount. I found out that there are some companies that um, do not allow you to sell below their retail price, um, or you end up, can end up losing your um, opportunity to affiliate with them. So, but uh, for the most part, I'll be able to discount everything. So I will look up the price um, at a discounted price. The Tim Holtz, the set, is how many are, there's like seven things in the set i don't remember something like that there's the the ink and and both of the sprays that the the distress ink the distress oxide there's the ink spray the oxide spray i think there's a re-inker there's, there's two re-inkers the re for the ink and the re-inker for the oxide yeah, and the embossing there's the embossing glaze yeah yeah i did not get any of the the little pins the tim holtz pins i didn't think anybody was interested in those and they're like five bucks retail. And if you want them, if you want Tim Holtz pins, let me know. I will order you some. But um, my thought was I would rather have another color, another media, another something rather than have the pin. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, all of that is on the way. All of that is on the way. So if you are interested in getting the new color, um, claiming... I can't remember how many I have. I think only six coming in on pre-order. If you um, know that you always like to get the new color and you want that whole set, um, shoot me a message. And the first um, six to claim those sets uh, will have them. Whatever the retail is, it will be less than that because I will apply um, I will apply a discount. There will always be a happy paper people discount as long as I'm allowed to discount a product. There will always be um, for you guys. There will always be a discount. So um, yeah, let me know if you want one of those. They Julie, will be- The crayons are not in a set. They don't, the crayons are done differently and on a different schedule. Yes, they are. Um, I did order the holiday crayons. I think they're 
Am I remembering right that these are pearlized? Yes. These are the pearlized ones. Okay. Pearlized crayons that it is just the holiday release. I did order some of those. Yes. And just kind of a sneak idea. Um, a lot of you have asked for this. This is the um, five hole punch. You get five different sizes of punches and of holes in one punch. I've ordered those. They're coming. Um, a lot of you do not have um, some of these corner chompers. This is the one that does two sizes, like quarter inch and the half inch. And then this one is the scallop and the stub. I ordered both of those. So scallop and stub is coming. I use those a lot. I really like those. And if you don't have a crocodile, I didn't order any of the great big ones because they're expensive enough. But I did order some of this one, which cuts holes, two sizes of holes, and you can put for your eyelet, and then you can put your eyelets in with this all with one tool. Because a lot of people ask me, I get messages asking for that one a lot. Um, trying to remember what else. Oh, the other thing that at least 100 people have asked me for, I'm reaching down for mine, is this mini guillotine trimmer. It's just small and it's super easy. I use it all the time, even on my 12 inch paper. I ordered these. I ordered some of these mini trimmers. So I'm really excited about those. Um, what else? Was there something else? There, oh, there's just so much. I can't even remember. There's some Finnabar. There's some Prima. There's Craft Consortium. Oh, TCW stencils. We love their stencils. There was a couple stencils I used one time when we were doing some mixed media and testing out some paste. And I, I, a bunch of people asked for a butterfly I had. The only one I can remember for sure is Margie, because Margie said, in all caps, that's why I remember, because she always does. She said, I have to have that butterfly. Margie, I ordered the butterfly stencil. So I will make sure that there's one for you if you still want it. No obligation. But if you want it, there will be one for you. So I ordered a whole bunch of the Crafters Workshop uh, stencils because we love those and all the new Stamperia paper that just came out. Of course, all the new Minte is going to be here on Monday. Um, I did get some waxes from Finnabar. Um, and I have till this afternoon to add on to that order. If there's anything in particular that you would like from any company through this one source, I have access to probably 500 different companies. So if there's something, put it in the chat right now because <laughs> I can get it added on this afternoon and then it's probably too late. I'm looking around to see if there's anything else that strikes me um, that I ordered. Uh, so much, so much stuff. So much stuff. Oh, dog's going to love when you get that delivery, huh? And that bill. <laughs> well, he doesn't get the bill because that's the business. So that's mine. <laughs> Except I give him all my receipts and he enters them all in the spreadsheet for me. So he will go, what the what? Because <laughs> yeah, it's not a small bill. <laughs> um, I, actually, this morning I ran to Goodwill and took... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six boxes of stuff to Goodwill to make some space. <laughs> not our, not our product stuff, just our own personal stuff to make space for the new products that are coming in. <laughs> I'm like, honey, I have to run to Goodwill. He's like, oh good. You're getting rid of some stuff. Yep. Got to make some space because orders are coming next week. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to be thrilled when he sees that. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Posca pens, I think they were in this order. Oh, um, art glitter glue. Uh, Aline's tacky glue. I know some of you use that a lot. Uh, is in this order. Wow, there's something else. There's some uh, mediums, some gesso or some matte mediums. I remember that. Uh, but the art glitter glue, you got the little bottle, and then there's a great big one that's a refill. And it's a better price to buy the great big one. So I only, long time ago, I got a little one, and then I only get the great big refill one. Cost 20 some dollars, I think. 
but I can refill that little one a ton of times and it's cheaper than keep buying the eight ounce refills. So that's what I do. So I got some of those big ones. Um, I just like to try to find the, the lowest overall price, put out 20 some dollars now and you won't need to buy it for another couple of years probably. So um, I'm looking around. What else? What else did I get candy? What else? I don't do know. I <laughs> what else uh, do you hope I got? I'm trying to remember anything else. I can't think of anything else. I know there's a lot of stuff. There is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't get. There's more stuff available from all the companies um, that we can get in the future. But um, I, what I did was go through and get, I have a list of things that people have asked for. DCWV. Yep. DCWV is in there. Uh-huh. <laughs> there was a couple of specific um, paper pads in there that um, I did get. And if you're wondering, let's see if I can reach this one. I can. If you're wondering about the craft consortium that I'm talking about, I know Candy was using it one day and people were asking about it. Um, here's some of it. This is called Ink Drops Ocean. That's one of them. Um, there's one that has metal textures. This one is Patina. I love this one. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> Don't know which way to go, upright or backwards. That one's Patina. There's metal textures. There's wood textures. There's all kinds of, of, of things. So those craft consortium ones are- I have, you know, I have Ink Drops Earth. Oh, I didn't get that one. I mean, when I bought them for me, I and think they were drop by dusk. I have that one. Oh, that was a pretty one too. I think I ordered that one. I know I got ocean for sure. I think I got dusk. There yeah, you go. The, that's pretty. This is the earth. Oh, that's earth. That's pretty. Yeah, it's, it's the green. I remember blue. we ordered them about the same time and they were out of that one. That's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. And this is the ink drops dusk. Okay. Oh, let's see that one. I mean, they were out of that one too. Oh, 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 it's got some gold in it. Yeah. So the front side doesn't have the gold, but the back side does have the gold on most of them. Yeah. Right. And it's not a lot. It's just like one little, like oh. little. Yeah. It's, um, uh, and not every page has it. There's just, right. Yeah. They don't all, um, what does it say? It doesn't say, but like the ink drops ocean. I noticed that um, as well, uh, the front doesn't have it and the back does. So you can choose which side yeah. you like the best. I covered I covered a, one of my books. Um, yeah, that's that, really pretty. They're really pretty. I use every single day. I covered one of my books in it because I love looking at it. It is so pretty. Yeah, that is gorgeous. Thank you for getting the bots. Um, the patina, I love. It reminds me a lot of the Tim Holtz. Um, I did order some of the Tim Holtz, you know, the wildflower and the French um, vintage and things like that. So like in the ink drops, here's the front, which is really super pretty. But look at the back. There's the back with the gold. And that's the one I used to cover my book um, and two of each one. So yeah, these are absolutely gorgeous um paper packs they really are i want to get back here to something that's more green that's um really blue but like check this out this is blue and green this is more kind of peacock blue and green teal and then the back there's a front and back together you can see a front is it showing yeah you can see a front there's the back and so you can see how they work in the gold and the bubbles. And and uh, so you have your option because sometimes you may want something with, uh, and there's four, there's four of each one in it. I love that. So there's one to keep and look at. I love this one too, that seems to have purple in it. Yeah, that one's like one of my favorites. Yeah. It's like and the it's blue. Not really marbling. It's, they're ink drops. It's, they, it's like they've ink dropped the paper yeah. on with alcohol ink is what it looks exactly. like. It's like it's the craft plastic or Yupo paper and they drop some alcohol ink on it. It was already covered with alcohol and it just spreads. 
It's just cool. There's some lighter blue, if you like the lighter blue. This is not even gold foil. This is just the paper on that yeah. one. Super pretty. And here's the back of that one. Yeah, these craft consor craft consortium papers are so pretty. Um, I'm thinking about doing a whole album in those, even using them as the backdrops or something. But um, you could, if you took some of those and punched out butterflies or um, ran them through your die cutters, die cutting machines, and so you you made butterflies or hearts or flowers or things like that, they absolutely turn out gorgeous because of that paper. So yeah, that's just a sampling of what's coming. Um, yeah, if you think of anything that you really specifically want that I did not already have on my list, and if you've given me something, you already know that you told me this is what you want, um, then shoot me a message or put it in chat right now and I can add it on this afternoon. Otherwise, it'll just wait till the next order, but no big deal. Um, it's here in the States, so it I will always have it within a week. So that's awesome. Even um, even the companies outside of the country, um, the Graphic 45 and the Chow Bella, I can get all those through this one vendor who brings all the others together. So I will still order directly from Stamperia and Minte. Uh, Pion is shutting down, by the way. They must have had a rough time during COVID. Can't blame them. Um, it was a little tough in you know, where they are. So trying to think if there was anything else that I ordered. Oh, anyway, but my thought is that if we do a Black Friday sale, that we can have a lot of those new products um, and some hot buys mixed in with them and, and a lap and craft and just have a fun time over the holiday weekend, relaxing, hanging out together and making some stuff, right? Now I really have to make some stuff so I can make room for more paper. <laughs> That's what I need to do. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Uh, we are over time. Um, yeah, and thank, you, <laughs> thank you for sharing the link to the website with your crafty friends, putting it on your profile or any in any group that um, that will allow. Please do not go against any group's rules. And I didn't even think to say that when we had the giveaway, because it would have been great to put the giveaway in groups that allow it. So other people could have gotten an entry in the give. Maybe you didn't want to anyway. That's more people to take away from you, right? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but share it wherever you can. We really appreciate it. And um, the more um, crafty people that we have coming in, happy paper people, the bigger and, and more happy this family gets. So can I still get pie on? I can get some. They are, um, they're not bringing out anything new. As it sells, it sells. So Glennis, shoot me a message. Let me know if there's anything in particular, or I can go look and see what, what is available. Um, still, it's been a while. They've been kind of on the, on the downhill for about six months. And um, yeah, so whatever they've got left, they've got left. And they're just, when it sells, it sells. They're not bringing anything new out. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Candy, so much for being here and crafting with me and spilling to make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did it. I did it just for you. I knew you did. You're just a friend. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, ladies. I love you. Had fun, as usual. Yes. <laughs> love y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.